Whew. All right, this is r &M Reviews, and I'm Rick. And today I'm going to be doing my review of the AC9 Genesis Atomizer. And for starters, uh, the AC9, sorry, a little smoky in here. Uh, you can purchase it at vapinaze.com. That's V-A-P-I-N-A-Z-E.com. And the atomizer alone, which comes with uh, the basic atomizer, and uh, also includes... This little baggie of extra parts, which includes uh, an extra nut, uh, two of the extra little shoulder washers, extra O-ring for the tank, and that nice little Delrin drip tip. Uh, it'll run you $120, and with the kit, which is $140, which is what I got, you get the AC9 atomizer. It comes in this really nice little display box, and uh, you get, obviously, the little bag of extra parts. You get this really nice high quality uh, stainless steel Ming drip tip. You get a little spool of 28 gauge canthal as well as some 30 gauge canthal. And uh, right now I'm running a 3-2 wrap, so 3 wraps one side, 2 of the other, of the canthal 28 gauge. Oh and uh, before I forget you also get uh, three pre-oxidized uh, stainless steel mesh wicks, and I believe they're 400 mesh, and they come in this really nice labeled bottle. It says uh, stainless steel wicks, and Babinets at the top, and floating in what I believe is some PG, and uh, the little sticker label on the bottle was a really nice touch, and the whole feel of the package when you get it, it's it's a really quality device, and that quality is really reflected in uh, the packaging and the time and effort that went into putting the package and the kit together. And uh, so the second I opened the box, I was already really impressed with the, uh, the labeled box. It comes in a, I believe, a medium flat rate priority mailbox with this inside there. All, I would say, overly bubble wrapped, so, uh, you know, nothing's going to break in the shipping process. And, uh, I mean, mine came set up for use. It doesn't come with a wick installed. Or a coil, obviously, but uh, setup is really easy. I'll show you the posts. Now, right there, you can see uh, you have your wick, which is a 3.5 millimeter diameter wick. So it's a really fat wick, fatter than most Genesis users are used to. But uh, it is the same sized wick as the DID. Let's see. And then uh, you have your positive post, and what that consists of is basically one very long screw, which is right here, just a little flathead screw, with the nut right under it, another nut a little further down, and then you have your first shoulder washer to insulate the positive post from the body. And then you have your little flathead ground screw right there, which is kind of far from the coil, though... Uh, you don't get any hot spots or anything there, and uh, actually I'm using my Carvella right now with the battery nipple down. Uh, that's just how I found it fits best with this particular setup, but uh, the center pin is adjustable. And, uh, let's see if I can show you that. So there you go. There's the center pin. And depending on how far down you screw this head with the bottom nut loosened, uh, you can adjust the height of your center pin, which is a really nice touch. And uh, because it's a Genesis atomizer and it doesn't have bottom fed airflow, you can get it to sit nice and flush on your mod. And uh, on the Carvella in particular, the outer diameter is, uh, without my caliper out, I would say it's an exact match down to a couple of hundredths of a millimeter. It's really damn flawless on there. And uh, if I had a satin Carvella, it would look even better. But uh, for now, so that's the post assembly. Then you have your top cap, which is held on with an O-ring. You can see right there. Uh, I was a little worried when I first took it out of the box and saw that. And actually, when I saw the first 3D CADs that came out on Vapenase and their little teaser promo, but uh, I find that when the cap is dry, it really does sit comfortably on there, and you can pick it up wave it around a little and uh, it doesn't come off and it's really sturdy on there. If you have a Zen or if you're at all familiar with it, 
Um, it, it's a really similar system, but I actually find that with this thinner O-ring and the deeper setting for the uh, top cap, it actually stays on there better than the Zen. And I'd say that in future runs, hopefully, uh, there's actually enough room for uh, Rip Trippers, who's the maker and manufacturer of the DID, to probably add a second O-ring onto there, which would be really cool. But um, yeah, top cap fits perfectly, and uh, of course, because it's on an O-ring rather than threaded, you can adjust it right over your wick or to the side of the wick if uh, you're looking for a bit more throat hit. But yeah, uh, for my setup, I'm going to use it lined up right over the wick. Really nice on there. And one other thing with the top cap is, unfortunately, with the first run of these, the AC9s, uh, the bore for the uh, hole of the drip tip is actually a little bit too big. So uh, most drip tips actually won't fit. The included Delrin tip, which comes in the basic, the $120 setup, fits perfectly. And then uh, in the kit, uh, this really nice, I'd say, uh, stainless steel main drip tip, again, is a perfect fit. But I know that for future runs, uh, RIP is going to be offering uh, replacement top caps uh, for the first runs that uh, they were a little bit too big. But the upcoming runs of it are going to have uh, top caps that will accommodate all size drip tips. But uh, for now, I've been using the stainless steel Ming, and it fits really well in there. Uh, some of my Super T T tips fit really nicely on there. Uh, none of my glass drip tips fit, unfortunately. They're all much too small. But um, it's a little touch that it, it really doesn't matter. But uh, overall, the construction and the machining is really perfect. Uh, everything from the tank to the posts, everything is it's really nice. Uh, the machining is just damn perfect. There are no gaps anywhere. Everything fits perfectly flush. Uh, the tank, it, I'm not going to take it apart just for the sake of having a more timely video, but uh, it the juice is all contained within the tank, so you actually never have the juice coming into contact with the post. It is going to have to look it up on vapenase.com because I won't be able to describe it and really do it justice, but uh, it's a really unique tank system, and uh, it does come with a... It's not polycarbonate, it's the same material that Kerfanis uses for his tanks, and it's PTTFE, I believe, but I know it is a more durable plastic so that most menthol and cinnamon and citrus juices won't crack it, though I know like, a tonic, atomic cinnamon, I believe it is, will... But uh, if you're vaping a juice that can crack bulletproof plastic, you probably shouldn't be vaping it anyway. So that's all I'll say there. But I know that in the future there are plans for uh, some stainless steel tanks, which I know I'm excited for. But uh, that's pretty much it for the tank. And again, one more thing for the top cap, or the post assembly, I should say, is that another small criticism I have is that to lock in your resistance wire, you actually need to unscrew the top nut. So not the screw head, but the one just below it, you need to screw it to the left to lock that one up. And when I've been doing that, I've had a couple issues with the bottom nut unscrewing itself. So I've had to hold the, uh, the flathead screw in with a screwdriver and then from there tighten the bottom nut. So hopefully going forward, he can come up with something that will help to secure the bottom nut a little bit better. I know he suggests using uh, needle nose pliers, which I just don't have on hand at the moment. But uh, it's a really small issue with it. But uh, performance is really good. I'll show you a uh, couple of things in particular that I've noticed is that, uh, and I've read others say as well, but um, you're able to switch juices seamlessly. I mean, uh, the fill hole is just close enough to the edge of the tank where you can put your syringe in so it lines up right at the corner of the tank to remove all of the excess juice from past tanks when you're switching flavors and uh, the plastic even though it's frosted and might suggest that juices would linger in there uh, I had a it was cinnamon strapple from raw vapor in there just before and uh, currently I'm running a tank of uh, backwood brew multi toffee in there and from the first hit after switching I didn't taste the slightest hint of the cinnamon 
and uh, that was a huge plus for me. Uh, performance, uh, it vapes a lot like a Zen, and uh, which is uh, a good thing, I would say, but uh, flavor is really solid. Uh, vapor production is awesome, especially considering it comes with the 28 and 30 gauge Canthal, and just up until recently, people really started using 30 gauge and it kind of popularized a little bit more, but uh, the 28 gauge was something new to me. And I know Rip's been vaping it for a couple of months now, and uh, uh, going forward, I'm probably going to vape nothing but 28 gauge Canthal. It heats up really quickly. Uh, you can get ridiculously low resistance coils with it and still have a decent number of wraps. You know, you have the surface area of the heating element to thoroughly vape your juice, and uh, flavor with it is awesome. Uh, wrapping it is especially easy, because so I find after annealing the wire, and I've actually started using a torch rather than a normal cigarette lighter if you've seen my uh, Genesis tutorial but uh, wraps really easily there's no like springiness to the wire so you know you can wrap a nice even tight coil but uh, still have the control so it's not too tight when you're wrapping it really easy vapes really well and uh, yeah as far as the size I believe it's 23 millimeters in diameter so that's the so you can see almost the exact size of the Caravella. It is, I think, the exact size of the body of the Provari. It is maybe one or two millimeters uh, thinner than the GGTS Stealth Cap. It is about two millimeters wider than the Precise Plus, and uh, subsequently about two millimeters wider than the Did. But uh, it, it feels kind of big. It's a pretty substantial atomizer. The top cap, if you can see, is really thick. I mean, it's a substantial feel and atomizer. It, there's nothing cheap or flimsy about it. Uh, all of the parts that are supposed to be tight and locked feel really tight and really locked up. Uh, it doesn't leak out the center pin, not that you would expect it to, or the juice being totally self-contained. And overall, it's a really great device. I know that they're all crafted here in the U.S. in North Carolina. And uh, the machinist who actually makes them, not Rip, who designed it, is a uh, uh, a true mechanical engineer. And uh, does really great work. Uh, the finish, it is a matte finish. So you can see the really faint horizontal lines from where the solid piece of stainless steel was put through the lathe. And uh, if you know me, you know that I prefer a polished finish, but uh, what are you going to do? So I might end up polishing it myself, but I know that going forward there are plans to include a polished and a media blasted finish to the AC9 for upcoming runs. And uh, today it's October 4th, and I know that in about two weeks' time, the second run of the AC9s will be available for purchase on Vapenase. And uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Uh, Overall, the performance is really fantastic. Uh, flavor, stellar. Vapor production, stellar. Throat hit is good. I wouldn't say it's quite there with like a Hellfire Mini or a Mini Did, but it's still, uh, depending on how you wrap your coil, it's it's robust with the 3T wrap of the 28 gauge. But uh, uh, you can make it work for you, for whatever you want. But uh, with the much lower resistance wires, uh, there's the potential to set it up exactly how you want it and to meet whatever needs you have. And there's the proper space within the top cap to, you could probably squeeze nine or 10 wraps onto a coil if you're really uh, neat and tidy about it. But uh, really great. Uh, form factor, it is quite large, but I, I wouldn't say to a fault necessarily, though it is definitely a substantial device. On a nice heavy stainless steel mod like the Caravella, it it, it feels perfect. Uh, the weighting is pretty even, uh, nice and solid. But uh, for those of you looking for a stealth vape or something smaller, it is probably not really for you. Though uh, don't let that deter you from checking it out and putting it on your list of devices to try out. Because uh, I think that's a really small thing to. Uh, to take away from this review, but uh, it's worth mentioning. And then uh, 
the only other real criticism that I've already mentioned is the drip tip size, but uh, going forward that is going to be corrected, so uh, take a couple of vapes and show you it performs a little bit more, but uh, here it is, and this is a, uh, again, 3 wrap one side, 2 wrap the other of 28 gauge Canthal A1 with a uh, IMR 18650 MNKE battery, which is the only battery that I use for vaping at 3.7 volts in the Caravella. So. Uh, I really got to say, uh, wicks exceptionally. Uh, the wick hole 3.5 millimeters, did, along with the DIT, are the two largest stock wick sizes out there right now. And uh, though the wick hole isn't insulated, uh, if you get the kit, the pre oxidized wicks that he sends uh, come perfect and ready to work right out of the little, little bottle that they uh, are sent in. Uh, yeah, wicking perfect right out of the box. I had literally no hot spots with my first coil using the 28 gauge. Um, no fiddling, it just perfect uh, right out of the gate. Uh, yeah, really, uh, I can't recommend the AC9 enough. Really happy with it overall, and especially if you have a Carabella or a GP PAPS or a GGTS with a stealth cap, because uh, I know the PAPS is almost identical to the Caravella in diameter. It might be a tiny bit wider, and uh, the AC9 is a little bit narrower than the GGTS, but uh, again, it's a near perfect fit on there. And so far, it's the best fitting Genesis Atomizer that I've seen on a GGTS stealth cap, but uh, take a couple more quick tooths for you, but really, uh, it's working great. Really happy with it. Great, and uh, on one last little note, or two notes really, uh, it does have a small rubber stopper that comes included in the little baggie of extra parts, and that is for the fill hole. Now, with all of my devices that have a stopper for the fill hole, I tend to leave it out, though this one kind of stands out in that it's just a tiny little red rubber stopper, fits right in the amply sized fill hole, which by the way, you can fill it straight from the bottle, and that's what I've been doing since I've had it, but damn, fits right in there. I find that it wicks better without it, but um, when you're not using it, you're using a thick wick with a uh, relatively thin uh, wall size, so a large channel in the center, thin walls of the wick. It's not really wicking by capillary action, the juice is more like flowing through the tank, like, uh, won't go into it, it's not really important, but uh, e either way, the coil stays wet, and that's really all that matters, so uh, I, I tend not to keep it in, though if you want to take it out and about and you don't want it to leak, I'm sure with a really thick wick with almost no channel in the middle or a solid wick and the fill screw in, I'm sure it'll still wick fantastically and it won't leak on you, which is pretty huge for Jenny's, but uh, that's all before it gets too long, and uh, really happy with it so far. So uh, enjoy. They will be back in stock in about two weeks, and uh, definitely worth checking it out. So enjoy. That's all I got.